Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Well, it's been a long time since I've addressed you this way, at least in this format. As you know, we share pre-owned inventory with our sister firm, Govberg Watches, so I often announce, welcome to our channel. But today, I'm coming to you live from Hollywood, Florida. Well, perhaps not live, but recorded, and we're in the path of a hurricane, so while Govberg sits pretty in Philadelphia, we're staring down Thunder Alley. Now, on my wrist, I'm going to show you the first of several extreme watches for extreme weather. This is my own Jezure LeCoultre Master Compressor Extreme World Alarm Tides of Time, one of 350 made. It's a combination of titanium and stainless steel. Now, the watch itself is big. Extreme size for an extreme watch, oh yeah, 46.5 millimeters across the round of the case, and that does not include its many appurtenances. You can see the toggle for the on-off function of the alarm inset within that. You can see the crown that moves the world time chapter ring. You can see crowns separately for setting the alarm, the date, winding, and setting the watch. This is a big watch at 46.5 across the case, not including those additions. The watch is also thick at 16 millimeters, and you can see with that toggle for the on-off function of the alarm and the world time crown, this thing's not fitting underneath any kind of dress cuffs. Heck, it might fit underneath a poncho, but that won't be enough in the face of Hurricane Matthew. From lug to lug, it's big, 54.5 millimeters. But you'll note that because the strap is a flexible, natural rubber bellows that came with the special edition, and because it can pull straight down, it's easy to wear around my tiny wrist, and I wear this watch comfortably. A handsome special edition from 2009, it also gives you the option to swap out the strap if you want, simply by pulling the tab that opens the pincers of the lugs. And the nice thing here, conventional spring bars. So you can strap this watch easily using aftermarket and OEM solutions that use conventional strap sizes and spring bars. Like I said, you can't buy this one, but you can buy this one. This is the Valentino Rossi limited edition of 946. Now this bad boy came out at SIHH in 2007, and it was controversial from the first. Like I said, an extreme watch, and JLC launched it with extreme art design. You can see the carbon fiber texture of the dial. You can see that standout fly yellow signature color of Rossi's helmet, as well as the 46, his signature number. And JLC went all out featuring yellow indices on the World Time Chapter Ring, replacing some of the reference cities with famed Moto Grand Prix motorsports venues. You can also see the handsome double-stitched black alligator leather strap, very substantial. You can see from the side just how thick it is and very sheer. It's impressive, but again, like my strap, pull it straight down, it doesn't fight a small wrist. Case dimensions in terms of thickness, width, and lug-to-lug -lug measurement are exactly the same. It also sports a nifty lacquered 46 on the case back, as well as notation that it's part of the limited series and the signature of Valentino Rossi. And both this watch and mine Limited edition variants of a regular production watch in the JLC catalog feature the same bimetallic case with a shock absorbing chassis, 100 meter water resistance, and instantaneous resilience against 2000 G loads. And I can verify, while I haven't motorcycled with my watch, I have taken it road cycling and mountain biking and it survived both trials. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more of a submersible bent, if you're talking about extreme depth, then you need this extreme watch, and this one is going to survive the hurricane, World War III, alien invasion, you name it. This is the Hublot Oceanographic 4000, the biggest and boldest watch of 2011. This Basel World novelty is simply a titanic mass on the wrist. If you sink it below the surface, it'll rival any missile sub. 22.5 millimeters thick. The watch is huge at 48 millimeters across the round of the case, but that's not including the shield atop the crown for the rotating internal dive bezel, nor the crown at four o'clock. It's a huge watch. Titanium makes it wearable. And you can see on my wrist, again, 16 centimeters in circumference, the thing simply dominates. Yes, it fits, and a big part of that is the extremely flexible Hublot natural rubber strap, very comfortable. It is immense lug to lug. At 60 millimeters, it's actually bigger than it looks. That's a strange dichotomy. The watch is huge, but in fact, it doesn't look as big as it is, simply because the strap contours so well to the wrist. Yes, I can wear it, but no matter how big your wrist, this thing's gonna dwarf it. You have to be into the big watch look, but it has all of the standard equipment you'd expect on an extreme diver, 4,000 meter water resistance, and as per dive watch protocol, 
It was tested to 5,000 meters to verify 25% over the rated limit. It also features a helium escape valve you can see polished on the flank at approximately 1030 on the flank of the case. Like my Jezreel Occult Master Compressor Extreme World Alarm, this watch features a unique push tab quick release for the strap. So you can just like a car seat belt buckle, you can push the tab, you can release the strap, now you can fit a textile strap if you want to have enough extensible length to fit it over a dive suit. It also features a simple and easily adjustable pin buckle built with a structural motif very reminiscent of the case, including the H-patterned blackened titanium bezel bolts, in this case holding the buckle itself together but a beautiful match for the recessed bolts of the case itself. You'll note immense amounts of loom. It is an Hublot caliber 1404, 23 joules, basically a value 7750 with the chronograph elements removed, 42 hour power reserve, efficient unidirectional automatic winding. There is a date in there and it does have a quick set function and when you pull the crown, first screwing it out, you do hack the balance and stop the second hand for precise synchronization to a dive timer or more likely in the case of this watch, the doomsday clock. But if you're a traditionalist, but you still want to go extreme, history revived in the Omega Seamaster Professional 1200, better known as the Plo Prof re-edition. From Bottle World 2009, the Plo Prof came back to us. Originally envisioned as a commission for Comex in the early 1970s, the watch was never used as such, back then known as the Seamaster 600. The 2009 re-edition of the watch features 1200 meter water resistance. Did I say this is an extreme watch? Well, yes I did, and the watch can back it up with the specs to prove it. First of all, 55 millimeters, across the case. You can see on my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch is big, but perhaps the greatest shock is that it's only 48 millimeters lug to lug, so it wears easily, even over a small wrist. It's the mass of this watch, which I've weighed during our What's It Weigh features, at almost 300 grams. It's an absolute titan, and that's just in stainless steel, no precious metal. You can see there is an extreme bezel, sapphire capped and fully loomed. It looks like a ground-bound UFO when you light it up. You'll also note that the method for articulating the bezel, the plunger allows you to move it bi-directionally, but when you release, completely immobilized. You also note the unique crown mechanism. Unlike the original from the 1970s, this one gives full aspect coverage to the crown inside, whereas the original simply recessed the crown. This one offers a complete bash guard. Moreover, the watch has incredible width, while not quite as girthy as the Hublot. 17.5 millimeters thick, this one towers above the wrist. It does feature an extreme bracelet known as shark proof, presumably because after the shark bites you in half, this will be the one part of your body, the wrist that's still intact. It also features an extreme clasp. Milled out as Omega dive clasps are, it feels very secure, but it has additional advantages in the fact that there is a push button to micro adjust it, so you have approximately 20 millimeters of incremental adjustment, and then separately, you have a deployant feature such that you can add almost two inches to the total length of the bracelet and the clasp at will. This is also a watch, unlike the 1970s original, which was said to be helium proof and thus did not need a relief valve. This watch does feature a helium relief valve on the opposite flank of the case from the crown. A very comprehensive watch and powered by Omega's dual mainspring barrel, 60 hour automatic winding coaxial chronometer caliber 8500. This is a lot of watch for the money, an extreme watch for extreme weather. For those of you in South Florida, along the southeastern US Atlantic coast, please, Hunker down, gather your supplies, maybe pull up some popcorn and watch some of my greatest hits on the channel, but be safe, be well, take care in extreme weather. These are your extreme watches.